Hello again and welcome to another educational video. I am Benjamin and this video is going to be about Uniswap and Balancer, but at its core it's really about liquidity pools that use a constant product formula. So Uniswap and Balancer, what are these in the first place? Both of these are protocols for exchanging ERC20 tokens on, e on the Ethereum blockchain. Both of these are systems of smart contracts, and that again means that we don't need any trusted intermediaries, we don't need any permissions. Anybody can use these protocols um, and their provided functionalities uh, to provide liquidity for a certain token or a certain project that might not be listed yet on other bigger exchanges, for example, or for a multitude of other reasons. But let's get to the mathematical meat. This is the constant product formula. It's not a complicated formula at its core. X times Y equals K, where X and Y are simply the amount of the two tokens that we have in our liquidity pool. And K, well, is the product of the amount, and that is to stay constant. And this gives us a certain behavior of, yeah, of these pools. Um, before we get into this behavior, I have one slide that is a bit more mathematical. If you don't care, then just skip this one slide and rejoin me in the one after that. But for the more mathematically inclined, we can generalize this uh, constant product formula, of course, to not only use two tokens, but an arbitrary number of tokens, n. And we can also weight these tokens if we want that with an exponent. This can be used to uh, favor one token over another in your pool. And this is the formula that Balancer uses. Uh, if we only have two tokens here and we weight them the, both the same, then this formula does straight up simplify to this one here. But it, yeah, it offers the option to have more than just two tokens and to weight them differently against each other. Um, yes, so much for this. As I said, this is what Balancer uses. This is what Uniswap uses. So how does Uniswap work from the user's perspective if you want to create a liquidity pool? So first, you pick the uh, token pair that you want to use. This could be your project token and wrapped Ethereum, for example, or some stable coin. Um, but it can be whatever ERC20 token you want, really. Then you create a smart contract for the new pool. This uh, you don't have to code yourself or anything. This is all, of course, hidden behind the user interface that basically anybody can use. You should know what you're doing, but you don't have to code anything or so. That is all done for you. You can just use this. Then you have to deposit an equal value of both these tokens into your liquidity pool. This means the same, um, let's say, dollar value of the two tokens. And when you have deposited that, then you will receive pool tokens. And these pool tokens represent your share in the total pool value. So this means when you just opened the pool and you are the only one who has deposited any liquidity into it, you will, of course, own 100% of the pool. And um, users that then use the pool to exchange tokens, they have to pay a small fee of 0.3%. Uh, and this fee gets accrued and is then, um, yeah, uh, is owned by the people that own the pool as well. Increasing liquidity after the fact as well gives you pool tokens. Anybody can um, put more liquidity into the pool and in return for that, earn a share well, of the total pool value, of course, and also of the accrued trading fees. And Yes, these, uh, these fees are split between all the pool token holders. Now, let's look into the behavior of these pools that use the constant product formula, because those pools do not necessarily always give you the price that you would pay um, on the open free market or on a, on a centralized exchange. Now, let's make up an example. Yeah. Let's say we have cat tokens and we have dog tokens. I don't know if these things exist uh, in reality, but 
for the example here, they're completely made up. And let's say the cat token currently is priced at about $1 and the dog token is currently priced at $2. Yes, I'm a dog person. Um, then let's call C the amount of cat tokens that we have and D the amount of dog tokens that we have. And let's start with a small pool value of overall just 1000 US dollars. And I said before that you have to deposit an equal value of uh, both tokens. That means if the total pool value is supposed to be $1,000, then we have to deposit $500 worth of cat tokens as well as $500 worth of dog tokens. I said in this example, cat is worth a dollar. So $500 worth makes 500 tokens. And I said that dog is worth $2. So $500 worth of dog makes 250 dog tokens, 500 and 250. So this means that our K, our constant product is, well, C times D, 500 times 250, 125,000 is now this K that is going to stay constant. And this is precisely what gives us the following behavior. Um, that behavior being that the more you want to buy or sell, the further away the price moves from the, uh, from the equilibrium or from the original price. Now let's, let's look at this concretely. Let's say in this particular pool, you want to buy 10 cat now. You can only pay with dog because this pool only contains uh, dog and cat. So you want to buy 10 cat. We have 500 cat in the pool uh, before we do anything. This means after buying 10 cat, there will be 490 cat left over in the pool because we bought 10, right? So now the question is to keep this K constant at uh, 125,000, if I lower the amount of cat from 500 to 490, how much dog needs to be in the pool that the product stays the constant 125K? And in this um, particular example, we need to have 255.1 abouts dog in the pool after, so that multiplied with 490, we get the 125,000 again. So now this means that we have to pay 5.1 dog, about 5.1 dog, to buy our 10 cat. And this means that we have paid 0 0.51 dog per cat. So this is a tiny bit more than it would cost in the, in the open market. And why is this? Because we're moving away from the equilibrium and these pools are supposed to basically balance themselves out, which is why balancer calls, uh, calls itself balancer. So you buy a small amount, you buy very close to uh, the original price. Now let's increase the amount we buy. Let's say you want to buy half of all the cat tokens that are in the pool, 50% of all the cat in the pool. This means that after doing so, there will only be 250 cat out of the original 500 left over. And then same mathematics as before, we will need 500 dog afterwards so that the constant uh, yeah, stays constant at 125K. And so this means that if we want to buy 250 out of the 500 cat, we actually need to pay 250 dog tokens for that because that's what the constant product formula gives us. And this means that in this case, I would pay one dog per cat, which is twice the market price. And why is that? Well, because the idea is to disincentivize you uh, or the user to buy all of one token and only leave the other. That's not the point. This is not providing liquidity, right? Because you just reduce the liquidity of one token massively. And because this is not wanted, the price goes up. So yeah, if you pay, um, if you buy half of one token, you will pay about twice the market price. And in a really extreme example, um, buying 450 out of all the 500 cat tokens that are in the pool. It's a small pool to make this effect really obvious. Um, this means that afterwards we only have 50 cat left in the pool because I, yeah, I'm buying 90%. There's only going to be 10% left over. Now I need to multiply 2,500 
with 50 to remain my uh, on my constant 125k. This means that on top of the 250 doc that were on the pool to start with, I to pay for my 450 cat now have to pay 2250 dog tokens. And this means I now need to pay five dog for one cat, which is 10 times the market price. And why is this so high? Well, because this trade reduces the liquidity of the one token massively. And that's precisely not what, um, what the idea behind these pools is. Now, on the other hand, if anybody were to actually do this, then we have now a pool in which the price of the um, cat token is massively above market price. What does this mean? Traders, arbitrageurs are incentivized to put new cat into the pool because they get way above market rate. They can um, basically buy dog uh, for cat extremely cheap. And so they are incentivized to bring the pool back to its original balance. And this is the point of this. Now I chose a small pool size for this example to really make the effect obvious that the further away you go in either direction of the balance of the original balance, the more unfavorable the trade will be. Now let's use a large pool as an example. Um, let's say we have a $10 million pool. This means same prices as before. This means we have 5 million cat tokens and 2.5 million dog tokens in this pool. Much, much larger than the pool before. Now, if in this pool I want to buy 10 cat, same mathematics as before, turns out I only pay 0.500001 dog per cat, which is just about the same as the market price. Why is that? Well, because 10 out of 5 million is so much less than 10 out of 500. This is the thing. The 10 out of 5 million barely change the balance, whereas 10 out of 500 are a noticeable change. And I have made a few more examples for this uh, large pool to really show the difference here. For the 250 cat that gave us twice the market price before, so one dog per cat, we're still at about 0.5. For 450 cat, which gave us 10 times the market price in the smaller pool, we're still at about 0 0.5. And we only see a really noticeable deviation in the larger pool when we go up towards like a million cat tokens that I want to take out of the 5 million. So that's taking 20% out of the cat liquidity that the pool has. Then I have a noticeable increase in price. Um, up to 0 0.0625 dog that I have to pay per cat. So to wrap this up, basically, these pools are to provide liquidity and they want to uh, keep on providing liquidity. This means that completely draining one token out of it is not what we want. This is not what it's about because, well, then if the, if the one token is gone from the pool, then the pool is no longer providing liquidity of this token now, is it? But that was the point. And so, yeah, buying a pool completely out is extremely expensive and disincentivized. Bringing an out of balance pool back to balance by depositing, um, by either straight up depositing or by buying and selling the respective tokens, that is very much incentivized because that's what these pools are about. So yeah, um, if you're wondering why on some decentralized exchanges, you are seeing sometimes prices that are quite different from centralized exchange prices or even prices from uh, different decentralized exchanges that don't use the constant product formula, then now you, uh, now you know why, because of the CPF, the constant product formula and the idea behind, I think I have explained enough. And yeah, this is why these are very different. They have different, they have different points. They are made for different things. So these pools are not, just to make this really clear, they are not about giving you a fair market price all the time. They are about guaranteeing some liquidity of a certain token being available at all times. And it will be available at all times because the less there is available, the more expensive it gets the less likely somebody is to buy even more of this token. 
this is what it's all about. I hope you learned something. I hope this was somewhat understandable, maybe even interesting. And I wish you a lovely day. See you next time. Bye bye.